Hello folks and welcome to the Widowmaker GT7 channel. We're doing something different today and that's why I seem a bit off kilter. We are driving the Civic Type R Limited Edition. I believe it's a 2020 car. And we're going to do the lap time challenge that's on the, um, the motorsport platform, the eSport platform that we have on GT7. So what we're going to do slightly differently is I'm just going to show you the car, I'm going to talk about the car and what it means to me and whether I've driven one before, whether I've owned one, that'll be interesting. And um, basically, we're then going to show you how to drive the lap and how to get gold, what to look for, what not to look for, key corners, etc, that kind of thing. So the Civic, what does that mean to me? Have I ever owned one? No, wanted to. I do have a... A, a vehicle of similar power, similar stature, but much older. And that car is a show car, and we were taking it to a show one day to display with another group of very like-minded, similar cars and owners. And we saw one of these on a display pan, uh, stand for a local garage, a, a car dealer. And we sat in it, liked it. It was a particular color, it was cream. And it was a wide body version. So whilst you can wide body them in this game, this was actually a wide bodied one. And it had, it just looked stunning. We went to the garage the following week to purchase one. And we were too late to the party. They were on the final colour. They were making them purely in the UK for the um, motorsport series, the touring cars. They were producing X amount of cars and exporting them and X amount of cars for selling in the UK. And they were on the last colour run, and they didn't manufacture any of the colours at the time that we wanted. A, can I buy one? Yes, I can. Currently in the market for a new vehicle, and this is top of the table, with about three others as my choices to purchase. But that being said, I do like driving front-wheel drive cars. Never driven one of these in real life, but I will do. And as we come to the end of the lap here, you've just had a good look at the car as it's gone round the circuit. And it was a pretty nice lap, but it wasn't good enough. We're now going to show you my fastest lap at time to date. So as we roll through the start-finish line here, we're just going to talk about the settings as to do for every race. And we'll just repeat it. So let's hope this isn't boring for you folks and that you go away from this video and you're able to then play and get a gold. So here we are. As usual, folks, the settings are traction control 1, default ABS, everything else off. And I have tried to run this with traction control off. Don't like it. So anyway, here we go. Current fastest lap times are 2.15.708. The ghost is set at 0.4 seconds ahead. So what we're aiming to do here is to run every lap. And that was a 2.15.653. We're going to run every lap and try and get within 0.4 of the ghost ahead and in doing so we're able to just creep up creep up creep up gain confidence brake later accelerate earlier see what happens when the car breaks into the corner see how we're just following a slightly wider line there because we tried to brake later it's cutting tighter to that corner we're braking just before that first ray of sunlight that comes through the shadows we're not going to hit that bank on the right hand side and you're not going to hit this curb on the left you need to change down just as you go onto these blue curbs, stop the car sliding left and drive for the middle yellow lines, turning left, changing down a third, trying to hug that inside line. Now with that being the case, you'll see at the next lap how important that corner is, because you get it wrong, you blow your lap time completely. Chasing down air as long as you change gear at the right time and then you have to be careful with this car. You'll see the revs go all the way to the top and then they'll suddenly drop as though the clutch hasn't bit correctly and it's free spin and that's probably trash and control but sometimes you have two goes at the rev out. See how deep I went there in that corner, you've got to brake at the right spot and we'll talk about that on the next lap. We're going to have a good look at this over three laps just to make sure you understand where we need to go and what we're doing. Excuse me, I'm still suffering with this cold for about three weeks now. Now, we were able to make massive gains there going into that corner, but we lost them on the way out. 
So we'll just take that into account and just remember that about braking early into the corner and going fast out. So we're just teasing the brakes there just to try and close in at the end of the run. So current fastest time is a 2.15.653. Acceleration on this final part of the straight is extremely important and if you blow it you ruin the next lap. So there it is at 2.15.566. So that's our current fastest lap today and we're going to blow this lap completely and I'll tell you that before we start. Going through these three corners, as long as you've got any two tyres inside the blue kerbs or on the blue kerb, you can cut them as much as you like. See how we nicely pull in on this corner, make massive gains on the last lap, so we've already gained 0.35 of a second. And we break just a little bit too, uh, too late there and just miss our apex point. We were faster on the last lap, but we're still 0.227 up. Again, changing down to third, running the yellow lines, and then we actually break too late here and just see how much we lost against the previous lap. To get on the gears here, watch this fourth gear, just make sure it goes all the way. You want to rev it out, like any particular Honda, they do like the top end of the rev range. It's the double overhead cam that keeps this engine sweet. It loves the full revs, that variable valve timing at the top end of the drive tank drivetrain just exhibits the maximum you can out of the horsepower that these cars run. In standard form this car's pushing around about 300 horsepower. In a front wheel drive car you think, well oh, that's not a lot of horsepower. But in a front wheel drive car that's enough for a road going car. So we blew that corner there. We lost out just by being too aggressive. Remember the last time we came down here we gained on the inside on the start of the corner. You can see how much we gained there and how much we lost on the previous lap and then we blow it by running too wide. But there it is, that's sometimes how it happens. Breaking down here, if we change it up to fifth, just on the end of there, we can break just before the green bits on that wall on the right hand side. There we have it, we lose a fair bit of time. So here's my little trick when we're a little bit behind, is I'm actually going to run longer distance. We're 1.3 seconds down. I'm just going to do a little switch back just to increase the acceleration distance from the start to the finish. So we're going to run through the start line and immediately we're 0.0079, 0.12 behind. But we're going faster, we're just behind the ghost. So mess up that corner a little bit, but we get that one nicely narrow. We put two tyres on that blue curb just to keep the angle. And we run into the tunnel here, breaking on the shadow. Get in nice and tight and try and beat that ghost out. There's loads of room there to beat. Breaking just before the yellow light comes through, comes through the gap in the trees. We're actually better off here than we were in the last lap. It says we were 0.227 last lap, but it feels better. I don't know what I'm talking about sometimes, but anyway, run the yellow lines, get in tight. Don't lose out to the ghost. We must have got that so well that corner last time through or two times through when we set our fastest lap. But here we go now, we're going to attempt to gain at the far end of the hairpin. So we're going to run all the way down the lap. We're still actually ahead of the ghost by 0.3. You can see that blue timer there at the centre of the screen, just measuring our distance against that previous lap. And we're losing all the time because we're slower out that corner. But let's see what we can do through it. Going to break late just before that yellow road sign on the right hand side. We've actually gained a massive, almost a whole tenth, then we've lost it all. I'm going to cut back through here, try not to lift, keep the foot in, brake on the crest of the hill. And I'm a, I'm a swine to my own means. I like to use the gearbox to slow down rather than the brakes, it's just how I drive. Changing down. I'm going to cut in tight and try and gain on that ghost, and we've done it. We're actually pulling ahead now. We're actually ahead of the ghost, so we're probably 0 0.5, 0 0.408, there it is in front of us. Breaking down, just, just try and let the brakes out a little bit to try and keep us ahead. Cut back into the apex of this corner, this corner is vitally important. Now watch the acceleration here. As soon as you get the, the wheel straight, you start to pull ahead. If you're accelerating with traction control on, you have to have your wheels almost straight. It's key. So 0 0.464. 
0.470 we beat that lap time to get a 2.15.096. And that's enough to get gold. We did one session of 19 miles, one of 48, giving us 68 miles. If I draw your eyes very quickly to the possible 2.14.666, that's on the cards for us to try again. And we'll do that again, and we'll give it a bash, and we'll see if we can get anywhere near that. Where does it put us in the leaderboard? Well, there's the gold. There's 2 million credits coming. And we're, we're 2,254. Fifth, top of the friends list, which is always good. And there we are, nowhere near the top, guys. They're running some four seconds ahead of us, but we'll get better, folks, and hopefully you will. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.